Uh, hello everyone <coughs> and welcome back for the lecture series. Uh, <coughs> In previous lecture we have seen about the th uh, theory related to hoisting mechanisms. Uh, what are the different types, how we can elaborate them, uh, what are the main components, okay. So in this lecture, we will start or uh, solve a problem, how to design a electronic overhead train, crane, traveling crane. So it is uh, shortly, you can say, uh, EOT crane. So <clears throat> this lecture is mainly focusing on design of the EOT crane. Now look at the picture. So the whole assembly of EOT crane is as shown in figure, which gives uh, a brief inter, uh, view of how the installation of EOT crane has been uh, done. So here uh, there are various uh, uh, panels or runways beams are there, so on which it can be moved horizontally and few uh, uh, bridge grinders are there so that the trolley can or a tro a trolley frame can be moved vertically and a poor up and down motion has been done with the help of uh, a motor gearbox assembly uh, with the help of hook so here we uh, it shows various uh, parts of the eot crane but out of that uh, in uh, our design we are focusing over the uh, this area where the I will just highlight that area. We are focusing over the this area so that the main component because the designing of the frame it's not a difficult task but the designing of hook is a very important because it directly uh, collaborate or you can say uh, the hook is the, per, is the first component which can directly in contact with the load so that we have to design based on the variation in the load okay so <coughs> we will discuss accordingly So we'll first uh, discuss about the some um, design aspect. So referring PSG page number 9.01, uh, there is a seg segment related to uh, formulas and standard information related to material handling equipments. Okay. So basically, we have to design uh, uh, different components uh, such as a wire rope, then. Uh, uh, hook, then shuttle plate and assembly. So here uh, about the design of wire rope, you can see over here the initial segment and initial formulas are given. Okay, so some uh, D by D ratio that is a uh, drum diameter versus diameter of the rope is given where capital D is a diameter of drum. Uh, that is a pulley or sleeve diameter and small d is a diameter of wire rope. So similarly different uh, failure modes and the formulas according to that is given. Here the rope drum design is shown page, page number 9.2. So according to that the various modes of failures are also given here. Then rope sleeve so these are the standard uh, rope uh, dimensions. Look at here. So six by 14 by seven, six by 16 by eight, six by 12. So these are the various groups of group six by 37. So here six are the number of strands and 37 are the number of wires in one strand, okay? So similarly, based on the diameter of the rope, the strengths are given, okay? Stencil strengths are given. So similarly, for another rope type, that is group number nine by uh, six by 19. And this one is a six by 19, continued. So basically, 
these uh, values and these pages are important with respect to the design so here uh, you can design if the chain drive is uh, use, using you can uh, design sprocket based on the chain roller design if weldments uh, weldment sprockets are used for chain drive then we are using from here then grooves on the drum can be designed with respect to this then sheave assembly or sheave grooves that can be standardized uh, we can design from here then main important component is a hook so hook uh, with the various cross sections which kind of cross section they are using then standard standard dimensions of the hook are given over here okay so these pages are very important with respect to the design uh, important formulas and the basic design okay let's start with the uh, basic uh, design with the problem so first problem i would like to share okay so i hope everybody seen uh, the problem which is statement is uh, written over here okay problem is the following specification refers to an evotic ring application is given that is a class 2 application the load to be lifted that is a 120 kilonewton hoisting speed 8 meter per minute and a maximum lift is a 10 meter select suitable rope for expected life of 18 months design the hook required for the hoisting and check it for induced stresses then design pulley axle cross piece and the shackle plate according to Lee. okay so these this is the given input for our uh, EOT crane design. So first of all, note down the data which is given. So first of all, Q dash. Q dash is the design stress. So we can say, uh, sorry, Q dash is a given load. That is a 120 kilonewton. That you can convert into kg also. So that is a uh, 12,000 kg of then speed is given in 8 meter per minute okay and height or you can say span maximum lifting height that is a 10 meter so q into uh, factor of safety or you can say service factor that is a 5% of weight of assembly that we are considering so that uh, the, uh, the load actual design load get increased okay so here we are increasing uh, the load actual load by five percent so multiplying by 1.05 what we get the total or design load for the eot is one uh, 12600 kgf so now first step to design a row so how we can design a row so first of all that we have to select a bend or a fall system now what is the importance of the bend and fall system that we have already discussed in the design because uh, to increase uh, the load carrying capacity these bends and fall systems are play a very important role so Okay, I hope everybody is uh, visible about uh, uh, different type of uh, few uh, bending systems. So look at the first one, first diagram. Uh, in the first diagram, uh, only one a single uh, pulley hook assembly is given. So to increase uh, the load carrying capacity, we have provided one single pulley system. So it can divide the total load into the two segments. So similarly, as the number of pulleys increases, the load can be divided uh, in each. So the total load acting on uh, the pulley or uh, on the hook is get divided. So that's why this uh, uh, bending system is very important role, plays a very important role. 
so let's uh, go to the design okay so here we are selecting three main four fall system and the basically the rope uh, designation that is six by 37 row uh, for more flexibility consideration now uh, about the manufacturing aspect we have selected the cross lay as the uh, we are considering that the load is uh, continuously uh, movable, movable so that the uh, rope can be spin so that uh, we have selected this one now based on the uh, values of bends we have to select d by d ratio as i discussed capital d and was a small d so let's see uh, from phd page number 9.1 so in a PSG page number 9.1, they have provided the based on the D by D ratio, where capital D is we can say diameter of pulley or we can say diameter of shoe, and small d is the diameter of wire row. So based on the D by D ratio and the number of bands, so you can select for three number of bands, D by D ratio is equal to 23 okay just note it down based on the divided ratio there is another factor based on that we can uh, find out the uh, divided ratio so in here the ratio is given okay we have used a psg uh, okay second things uh, as we are using 6 by 37 rope designation okay and the application is class number two okay so based on this if we select d by d ratio uh, 6 by 37 and a class two so at the, this condition we get d by d ratio is a 17. so based on the number of bands we get a d by d ratio that is 30 uh, 23 from here and from based on the application we get d by d ratio is equal to 17 so we have to choose uh, the uh, one of them so as per the consideration of the strength i'm selecting d by d ratio is equal to 23 now i have to, I have to calculate the breaking strength of the rope so how we can calculate the breaking strength of the rope uh, referring phg page number 9.1 so in the PSG page number 9.1, the breaking strength of the rope is uh, that is called as a P. So that that should you have uh, can calculate from this equation. So P is equal to F into sigma U divided by sigma U by N minus D by D minimum DW by D E dash, where E dash is a corrected modulus of elasticity of the steel rope which is given 0.8 into 10 raised to 6 kg per cm square so i suggest all of you to convert um, all the units in a particular format if you want you can go with the kgf if you want you can go with the newton per mm square but most of the dimension over here are in a centimeter and kgf so according to that and e for ease of calculation you can convert uh, newton into kgf and mm into centimeter so that uh, you couldn't miss any calculation or any conversion improperly okay so here we have written that equation now we need to calculate uh, the all parameters so f f is nothing but load per fall so if we are using three by uh, three band and four fall system so as the number of falls are four so the total load which is carried is divided into four segment so we are using three pulleys so that the number of falls are four and the total load is divided by into the four segment so we divided uh, the total load divided by four number of falls uh, so we get the load per fall is equal to 3150 3, 3, now we have d by d ratio that is we can say 37 uh, 23 uh, then volume of sigma u 
value of sigma u is given in PHG that we have discussed that is a one uh, that is 180 kgf per mm square <coughs> or you can say uh, one uh, 18,000 kgf that is the tensile strength of the wire uh, then about n dash the factor of safety which is shown in PSG you can look at here factor of safety based on the application you can choose a factor of safety okay by considering proper the housing system and flexible cranes we have considered class 2 application is given okay so based on this we have selected the factor of safety uh, that is n dash 5 we have selected plus duty factor multiplied by duty factor that is 1.2 so equal to 6 okay so duty factor is considered as a 1.2 so value of sigma u we are founding from here okay so based on the rope dimension we have to calculate okay load carrying capacity ke sab se hum logo ne wo consider kiya hai okay if it ends up stick considering that is a 160 to 175 and here the tensile strength, strength is given 175 to 190 so we have considered 180 uh, kg per mm square so it is uh, when it is directly converted that we get directly kg uh, sigma y sorry sigma u is equal to 18000 kg f okay so putting all the values in the equation what we get uh, we can directly able to calculate calculate the value of p now p is equal to 37.63 into 10 raised to 3 kg f or you can say p is equal to 37.63 ton so that much load we can carry now how to select the rope diameter okay simply referring PSG page number 9.4 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, So referring PSG page number 9.4 and breaking strength that as we discussed, the tensile strength in between uh, 180 uh, kg per mm square. What we get? Uh, the load carrying capacity is 35.6. Just a minute. We'll just cross check once how much we have calculated. Uh, we have calculated uh, 37.63 37.63 so we have to check whether the uh, nearest value of the uh, calculated value so the nearest value it is lies in between 35.6 and 44.7 so we have selected this 44.7 which is a greater than the design one so the diameter of the rope is now finalized that is a 29 mm just note it down okay so now this 29 rope diameter can carry 44.7 ton load which is uh, greater than the design aspect okay so now what is the next next we have to check whether it is safe or not so pulley uh, calculating the pulley diameter 29 multiplied by 23 as the d by d ratio is 23 we calculated the pulley diameter that is a 667 mm now next one we have to check the life of rope that is a very important task because uh, in the problem they have suggested to design a rope for minimum 80 month life so again go to the PSG page number 8 point uh, sorry 9.1 where the rope, uh, rope life has to be calculated just a minute Okay, 
so as per design we have written the equation that is a, a, a tau is equal to 10 f divided by pi by d square so referring this in a PSG what do we get uh, we have to calculate the other components also or other uh, parameters also so here uh, the equation you can calculate based on the given value uh, here the n value is given so we are putting the basic dimensions uh, uh, sorry basic uh, values and prepare this equation so uh, note down this equation because a simple in a simple manner uh, the fourth load is equal to uh, area divided by uh, the stress okay so based on this we have found out the equation that is okay just note it down this equation uh, putting all the values of f and diameter d what we get the design stress or you can say calculated or induced stress that is 11.922 kg per mm square okay so next one to find out uh, the values or you can say uh, the baking life of the uh, life of the rope based on the uh, given formula refer PSG page number 9.8 oh okay the all the dimensions are given here so we will just list out the dimensions values okay from PSG page number uh, 9.8 what we get uh, <coughs> uh, referring PSG page number 9.7 uh, we will uh, directly get the equation uh, that where we have to uh, design of hoisting rope for his life okay so initially in previous equation a row the rho is equal to 10 <coughs> we have calculated the actual induced stress okay so now this uh, induced stress we are using in this equation okay now we have to use this equation okay o uh, shown over here so this equation we will uh, gives the exact life okay so what are the uh, small m where small m is nothing but the value which is we can find from the number of bands okay so here the value factor m which can be found in m in a hundreds so value of z based on the value of z you can find out the value of m okay next uh, the c1 c1 is we can find out from table number three so here table number three based on the rope diameter you can find out the uh, value of c1 so our rope diameter is a 29 so you can calculate in between next uh, then next one c2 c2 uh, that is also uh, they have shown over there that is in between you can choose 0.63 to 1.15 depending on the row material and its a treatment so while manufacturing the row what kind of the treatment zinc treatment is given or any other uh, additional treatment is given so based on that this factor is uh, we can get and last one c c we can find out from table number four where based on the type of uh, rope and the uh, how it can be manufactured as we have chosen six by 37 and a cross lay so that we can choose and the strength of the rope that is 180 so the value of c is 1.02 okay so similarly we have to uh, note down all the values so here uh, the, all the values are given c1 is equal to 1.16 c2 
C2 is equal to 0 0.89 and C is equal to 1.02. Okay, so now alpha, beta, and Z2. So here, value of A, the value of A, which you have shown, that is nothing but uh, area. Uh, value of A is equal to 3400. Beta, beta is shown over there. So, value of beta, which can be calculated from PhD page number 9.8. So, you can directly find out the all the value of uh, all the values, st standard values. So, here the all values are given. Okay. So, based on the power driven mechanism condition, the working values of A, Z, and beta is given. So, A is the working cycle per month. Z is the number of related bends per cycle and beta is the endurance factor. Now, if you are considering a uh, hoisting condition, means how much hours we are apply, uh, we are working. So based on that, the uh, values uh, we have to note down. If you are wor working manually, then uh, the working cycle per month value of A is equal to 400. Then the number of uh, repeated bends per cycle are two and the endurance factor beta is equal to 0.7. So we have considering the industry is normally working in a two shifts so that the eight, 16 hours, one shift carries eight hours. So the 16 hours per day, that is a medium duty, medium duty condition we have considering. So the value of A, that is working cycle per month, are 3,400. Then the number of repeated bends per cycle are three, and endurance factor is 0 0.4, it, which is found from table number two. So we got all the values now. Now putting the values in equation, what we get? So initially we have to calculate the values of M, small m. So we have founded the value of small m. Here d by d ratio is 23. We are putting all the values over here. What do we get? m is equal to 1.194, where m is in hundreds, as we seen in PhD page number 9.8, table number one. So from table number one, uh, the value of m uh, yeah, here we have called uh, calculated value in a unit. Now it is converted into the 100. So multiplied by 100, what we get? 119.4. So for similar value of M, 119.4. So here the value is in between 118 to 11, Just show you. So here <clears throat> our value is 119. So rather than going for a inter, uh, uh, calculating in mid between, we have selected the value of Z that is for 118. M is equal to 118 and value of Z is equal to 170. <coughs> So it is in a hundreds. So we have multiplied by 170. Into 10 raised to 3. Thousands, sorry. Z, is, Z value is in a thousands. So 170 divided multiplied by 10 raised to 3. Now calculating the life of row. PSG page number 9.7 n is equal to 0 0.4 z divided by a beta z2 so putting all the values what we get n is equal to 15.74 months so the life of the rope is selected 15.70 uh, 15.74 so which is less than the expected one so here we uh, found that the whatever the lobe diameter we have selected is a fail in uh, uh, to satisfy the intended life uh, which we need to design. So what is the next step then? If you fail, 
then we have to change the capacity so we have to go for next rope diameter okay so now we have selected rope diameter next one that is d is equal to 32 now repeating same procedure what we get by putting all the values we have funded the value of m which is in 100 so that is a 1.445 uh, convert into hundreds that is 145 calculate the value of z that is 220 which is in thousands so multiplied by 10 raised to 3 again calculated the value of n now the calculated value of n is 21.56 months which is greater than the expected one so this diameter we have selected for further calculation now next one the design of third part that is a design of sleeve axle so referring PSG page number 9.10 what we get Here the standard dimensions of the shoe has been given. So let's see how we can use uh, this one in our design. So all are requested to draw this diagram because it actually gives uh, the idea how the shoe axle and standard components are to be designed. Okay, next part is to be designed is a uh, access view uh, referring the PhD page number 9.10 uh, where the standard uh, components or can say standard dimensions of the uh, sleeve ax uh, shoe axle or uh, shoe grooves has been uh, mentioned. So from that we are selecting standard one. So here 34.5, 39.0, 28.0 these standards uh, based on the wire rope their diameter all the parameters are given okay so we are selecting as we know that the power uh, rope diameter uh, we have selected is 34 point uh, sorry calculated is uh, d is equal to 32 mm okay so here we have selected the shoe dimensions based on the standard shoe form d is equal to 34.5 mm and which is the next value of d is equal to 32 okay so now from that <coughs> we have initially calculated uh, done some calculations just everybody are uh, requested to draw this diagram uh, while design because it gives the uh, exact idea how much the stress and where it is actually maximum so that uh, the designer can be understood uh, where uh, the maximum load and how you have designed this okay so few standard dimensions i have shown over here so initially we have selected that at the uh, outer end diameter uh, uh, the load which is given okay as shown in figure so maximum uh, load is in in at mid area uh, few standard uh, assumptions uh, we have made that is given over here the total area a is equal to 90 mm height h is equal to 55 mm okay so based on this uh, i have drawn the uh, the basic uh, what you can say 2d sketch of the design okay with the bending maximum bending strength now calculated or uh, design uh, of this uh, sleeve uh, shiv is uh, based on the maximum bending criteria so sigma m is equal to 2f into 15 plus 108 divided by 2 okay so this is the uh, force that is a total force which is applied over here and the distance distance so here 15 plus 105 by 2 so at that point uh, the to maximum load that is 2f is to be applied so that this pulls into the distance so what we get Ma maximum bending strength that is uh, 434.7 into 10 raised to 4 newton per mm by using flexural beam condition sigma b is equal to m by z 
where m is equal to we have calculated just now sigma b which we have considered is a <clears throat> material c50 with the maximum sigma ut value is 360 newton per m square factor of safety considered 3 so the design sigma t is equal to 120 newton per mm square now about this z z is equal to pi by 32 d axle the diameter of axle uh, d cube so in this equation by using flexural formula what we get we can calculate the diameter of axle that is d is equal to uh, 71.72 okay so that diameter we have calculated now next the select bearing for slip as she is rotating she axle is rotating so that um, we have to cal uh, we have to give the supporting things that is a bearing so for bearing we need to calculate uh, we need to find out <coughs> the actual velocity or speed of pulley at which speed the pulley is going to rotate so hoisting speed multi multiply number of falls divided by two so half of number of falls we have considering so hoisting speed is eight meter per minute multiplied by four by two number of falls are four divided by two the velocity is 16 meter per minute so the circular velocity v is equal to pi by pi d n by 60 16 by 60 is equal to pi diameter d 0 0.7356 736 into n divided by 60 so find from that we can calculate the value of n that is 6.91 rpm now assuming the life of bearing is for two years so life of uh, life of bearing in hours that is uh, considering uh, 12 months we have considered so 2 into 12 into 25 into 16 16 is the number of hours of per day working and number of days per month are 25 and number 2 is the number of years so in each year we are using 24 uh, sorry 12 months working days so we haven't considered uh, any downtime so that's why we are considering continuous work uh, in a whole month there there are 25 days of working and in one day there are 16 hours of working so similarly we have calculated two number of years 12 number of months per year 25 number of days per month 16 number of hours per d so multiplication of all what we get the life of hours expected that is 9600 hours now converting the life of hours in millet revolution l90 that is a 90 percent probability uh, that should be uh, completed by the bearing so l19 is equal to lhr into n into 60 divided by 10 raised to 6 so putting all the values what we get l90 is 3.98 million revolutions so now based on this we have calculated the equivalent load that is referring phg page number 9.4.2 uh, peak equivalent is equal to xv fr plus y into fa into uh, service factor sf into kt or you can say directly uh, you can use service factor only so here v uh, v is uh, for uh, outer race is rotating inner race is rotating uh, the value of v velocity are uh, get uh, changed so as the uh, outer race is rotating v is equal to 1.2 x is equal to 1 uh, here the axial factors or axial load is a zero so we are considering at a zero and for fr it is equal to twice of f as we have seen in the diagram so value of f we have calculated so f is equal to 3150 and the value of fr is a twice into that so putting all the values service factor we have considered 1.6 kt is equal to 1 so p equivalent after the calculation what we get p equivalent p is equal to uh, 12096 kgf now next step to calculate the dyna dyna dynamic capacity of bearing so nine uh, l90 is equal to c divided by p equivalent raised to k 
for a rolling contact bearing k is equal to 10 by 3 at uh, referring PSG page 4.2 so <clears throat> L90 is equal to 3.98 million revolutions is equal to C by 12,096 raised to 10 by 3 as uh, shown in uh, design so calculated or dynamic capacity expected is 18,306 kgf now for that we have to select a spherical roller type of bearing because the load carrying capacity should be high so rather than bowling ball bearing we can select a roller or spherical type so spherical type of roller bearing can uh, carry uh, the axle as well as the some uh, fully radial load as well as some variation in the axle load so both load it can carry so that's why we are considering a spherical load a roller bearing uh, with the PSG page number 4.32 uh, that is uh, SKF 22218C that is uh, with the dynamic capacity of 20,800 kgf and having a bearing diameter of 90 meter per uh, sorry 90 mm which is greater than the design one so that is the design uh, bearing of design is safe and acceptable Okay, so next design we will discuss in a next lecture.